So sorry. I seem to have been on mute. How weird is that? I normally talk so much and I never put myself on mute, so I do apologize for that. Let me start again and just say hello and welcome to Library Adventures Live. My name's Jude and I'm a librarian from Kirklees Libraries. How are you today? I think I already said that I'm super happy because I'm presenting Library Adventures Live and it's been ages since I was last here. Well, it feels like ages, but it was only a couple of weeks, I guess, and I was part of a spacetastic addition to Library Adventures Live. And if you didn't get to see that one, or maybe you've missed one or two of the other Library Adventures Live, you can see them again because they've all been recorded. All you need to do is just go to, let me just pop that up www.kirkleeslibraries.co.uk and you'll be able to choose from lots of different Library Adventures Live that we've done, lots of different adventures, be able to watch them at a time that suits you. So last week, oh, I know the other thing was that you can also catch up with what's going on in the libraries, lots of events and how libraries are changing a little bit at the moment. You can keep up to date with that there as well at kirkleeslibraries.co.uk. So last week for Libraries Adventures Live, we had a special guest and he came in to help us celebrate Black History Month because the whole of October is Black History Month. Now, he was a really multi-talented special guest that we had last week. I've just got a little list that I need to read from to say all the things that he is. He's a hip-hop artist, a rapper, a world record-holding human beatboxer, writer, all in one person, all that in just one person, and his name is Testament. Whoa, what a great time we had then. And he also asked us if we knew how and where hip hop, rap and beatboxing started. Now, I don't know about you, but I didn't know anything about that until I watched Testament last week. So again, you can catch up with Testament's show at kirkleeslibraries.co.uk and you can go to Kirkley's Libraries YouTube page and you can just click on his video there and watch it again. If you struggle at all, you can always ask a grown up to give you a hand as well. Not only do you learn about where hip hop, beatboxing and rap started, but you get to see Testament perform his rap and his beatboxing. I know, it was absolutely awesome. Plus he asked us, us, you and me, Hmm, probably not me actually. He asked you to write a rap and send it in to him. Now he helped us get started by saying, where are you at now? And then he explained a little bit more about that. And he said, you could write about what you're feeling, what you're doing, where you're stood, maybe you're in the kitchen, maybe you're in the classroom, or you can write about what you hope for and what your dreams are. And then if you want to write it down, maybe you want to record it, you can send it across to us at LAL, which is Library Adventures Live, at kirklees.gov.uk. And then it'll come over to us and then we'll be able to send it to Testament because he's really excited about hearing some stuff. And the other thing that he told us was some rules about rap. So I'm just going to bring those up because they might help you with when you're getting your rap ready to send to us. He said there's his rules of rap are number one, a rap needs to rhyme. Number two, a rap needs some rhythm. And number three, do it. He said it much better than me, to be honest, but he said do it. And what he means by that is just do it. Don't worry about it. Just have a go because he'd love to hear all about it. And as I say, if you just send it to lal at kirklees.gov.uk, we'll pass it straight across to Testament, which will be super excited to see everything. Now, let's hear what exciting adventures we've got going on today. I'll just get rid of that banner. That's brilliant. Oh, yes. Before I forget, please, if you're watching, we'd love to hear from you. We'd love any comments you might have. We'd love to hear 
answer any questions you might have about today. You'll you'll kind of meet the author very, very soon. So any questions or any com comments you want to send us, and maybe if you're a school watching, you could send in your name and we'll give you a great big shout out. Just go to the chat box on Facebook or YouTube and then it'll come up and we'll be able to answer it as, as we go along. I know we've got one or two people really excited about answering some questions. Now, there's another thing that I was thinking about, especially for today's Library Adventures Live, and that is, do you speak two languages? Do you speak more than one language? Maybe you speak English and Japanese. Maybe you speak English and French, or maybe a bit like me, you speak a little bit of German. <laughs> this will all become clear why I'm asking you this when we meet our amazing author today. So if you do speak more than one language, maybe you could send a hello in another language right through to us. Again, just go to the YouTube page or the Facebook page, whichever you're watching on, and type it in the chat box there. But don't forget to tell us which language it is, because I don't know every language of the world. I don't know about you. I'd love to think that I did. I know a few, but I, but I don't know every single one. So if you can write down which language you've written hello in and also tell us exactly what you've written, that would be fantastic because we could always put it up on our screen a bit like that hello there and then you'll be able to see it today. Okay, so I'm sure you're super excited to um, meet our amazing author today. So I'm going to just tell you a tiny bit about our author. So today's super special guest is award-winning author and illustrator Nadine Kardan. Yes, so Nadine is from Syria and she'll be reading from her award-winning amazing book called Tomorrow. Now, not only did Nadine write her book Tomorrow, she also drew all the pictures for it too. Yeah, super talented, super talented. And today, now, this all makes sense about why I was asking about different languages. Nadine is going to read her book tomorrow in both Arabic and English. What a treat. Now, are we ready? Are we ready to meet Nadine? I think we'll give her a great big round of applause. Yeah. And introduce Nadine Kadam. Hello. Now, I'm going to try my hardest to say Mahaban Nadine, Mahaban Nadine. Marhaban Jude. Which I hope is hello Nadine, but in Arabic. So, Mahadan Nadine, Mahaban Nadine. Perfect. It's lovely to, lovely to meet you. I'm super interested to find out what you're going to be doing today. Thank you so much for the wonderful introduction first. I was really uh, excited to hear it. And I want to write some rhythms and uh, Ooh, uh, some rhymes. So yeah, some yeah, rhymes. Please do send them to us. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'm sure yeah. Testament would be very pleased to hear from you. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to participate in the competition. <laughs> so I'm so excited that I am part of your adventure today. Thank you so much for inviting Great me. Stuff, of course. Um, pleasure yeah and thank you for your arabic word marhaban ahlam <laughs> uh, so i am so so lucky and honored today that i am invited by you to read my book tomorrow but i feel more special that you ask me to read it in arabic and in english Aww, so that you. is for me very very special and here are the two books so i was lucky enough to write in two languages uh, I have books written in English, as you can see here, the Jasmine Sneeze, and books that I wrote in Arabic, Layla Rudjaliya, which means answer me, Layla. So I am very lucky that I'm able to write in my mother tongue and in English and explore languages and writing in two different languages. Wonderful. So um, today I will tell you a little bit about myself, show you a little bit where my inspiration comes from. A small presentation it won't be too long. No, that's cool. <laughs> and then we'll be, we'll be reading in Arabic and in English my book. Oh, fantastic! And then I'm really, really excited to hear lots of questions. So I really hope we get lots of questions today. 
So do I. I'm sure we will. We've already got a couple of things coming in, so it's already great. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I can't wait. And then maybe at the end we'll have a little treat with some drawings. I know that we practice Ooh, together how to do it live. Yeah, yeah, it does look great. Such, yeah, I'm really excited. I'm not going to give too much away, but I know it's a character for one of your books that you're going to be drawing. So how amazing is that? Okay, so should I go ahead and start? Yeah, that would be fantastic. Okay, so I'm so excited to hear who's joining us. And so we hope we hear the names of the school and we do a little shout out. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about how I write, how I illustrate, and why specifically I wrote my book tomorrow. Oh, yes. Before I start reading the book. So uh, let's start with a little presentation to show you some pictures of my hometown. Okay, cool. Uh, I chose to show, to show pictures of my city because every time I do an author visit, I go visit a school, they tell they ask me so many questions about my beautiful city. And I thought wow. it was always a good opportunity to show photos of my city and show how it's always been a source of inspiration. Wonderful. Great. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> so I'm going to share the screen now. I know that we practiced that. Too. Yeah, we did. So fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> we might need people to be a tiny, tiny bit patient, but hopefully it'll all work fine. Okay. Um, so please uh, let me know okay. that I'm doing it. Okay, are you ready now? I'll bring it up. Ready. All right, we just need to... Are you happy for it to be quite small next to you? Should we have a go yeah. with that? Sure. Yeah, let's have a go with that and see. It looks nice right next to you. Okay, fantastic. Is it ready now? Yes, I can see it says, hello everyone. And then it says who you are. Okay, so this is a picture of me. And this is a picture of me in um, a refugee camp in Lebanon, reading my book tomorrow for lovely Syrian kids who was forced to leave their home because of the war. So when they say people that you are from Syria, of course, the first thing that comes to their mind is the war. And that's what the book about that I'm going to be reading tomorrow. It's about the war in Syria. But my presentation, it's about my city before the war, because I want to show you the inspiration behind all of my books and why this beautiful city made me want to write and illustrate stories. So this is uh, the if we can get that as a larger screen. There won't be a moment. I'll just go ahead. See if we can. No, I'll leave it as that because I think it probably can't get it as a large screen at the moment. So, OK, is it is it good now? I can see your pi I can see the picture. Yeah, that's great. Okay. So this is um, this is a picture of my uh, of Damascus, the old town, and this has been a source of inspiration for me: the fountain, the courtyard, and the arches. And here is an illustration to show oh. how it looks exactly like Damascus. So that's why the building you might find them different than the buildings here in the UK because yeah. they are yeah. Uh, here is another beautiful old house with the fountain and uh, the, the, how, the rooms around the fountain. And here's a fountain and a cat. Oh. Now, I like to draw cats because in Damascus, we have lots of cats in the street. And I call them the honorary citizens. Uh, everyone loves cats. And uh, they are a very loved animal in the city. There is always cats. And there is a Jasmine Sneeze. My book is also about a cat. <laughs> and, and that's the Umayyad Mosque, and uh, it's one of the most beautiful um, temples in the world. And it's also, you can find it in my illustrations. I don't know if you can see the similarity. Is it clear for you, Jude? Yeah, it's clear. I can see the shape on there. I can see some of the patterns. And yeah, I can really see where it came from. That's wonderful. Yeah, so it's 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 a beautiful ancient city, and I found it impossible not to be inspired by it and not to draw these beautiful buildings and create stories that come from that place. Wow. And here's another one, and as you can see, here are wow. the arches. Wow! So all all to say that we lived in beautiful houses, 
and our, our life is beautiful in Syria uh, until the war started. And this is when uh, many Syrians have to move out. But I always find it important to show people the beauty of our heritage and culture for yeah. us to keep it and hold on to it. And that's why I'm so happy that I will be reading in Arabic because it's our mother tongue, it's our identity, and we should try as much as possible to preserve it. Yes, of course. And that's uh, lots of pigeons, and that's why I draw lots of pigeons here. Oh. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> and uh, well, it's good to mention that Damascus is very sunny, and as you can see here, the sun and the shade also inspired my colors. So as you can see, the contrast between the blue and the oh, orange, yeah. and that all comes from the dark and the shade in Syria. So you can see blue and orange, it's represented by the dark and the shade. And that is the jet. <laughs> what a lovely cat. Wow. Now, um, I'm going to end sharing screen. Like I mentioned, I don't want to take too much time in the presentation. Yeah, of course. Uh, of course. Uh, more time for question and answer. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. That's fantastic. That was that was so amazing. You know, sometimes we don't get um, we don't get the opportunity to see the inspiration behind the books, do we? We might pick up a book and look at it and look at the pictures and know that they're beautiful and and you can see sort of buildings and things, but to be presented with something to show us directly where the inspiration came from, that's wonderful because you could see the shapes, the patterns, the colors. And maybe that's one of the things that we can do if we're thinking about doing any drawings, however old we are, however young we are, if we want to try at drawing, maybe we look around where we live and maybe there's a canal or a river or a, a building that's a different shape and we can start to have a go at drawing those, a bit like you were doing with Damascus. Was a lot of it from Damascus that you were drawing? Yeah, I think if you love a place so much and you're passionate about it, you'll find all sorts of stories and all sorts of inspirations. And uh, for me, I found it very important to show that this inspiration is still present, although I moved to London and it's been yeah, taken course here. And also I found it very important to show our beautiful city because Many people only know about the war, but yes. not, not enough know about the beauty of these ancient cities, yeah. uh, the beauty of these architecture. And it's inspired me to write the Jasmine Sneeze. And, and even in my book, Answer Me Leila, and all my other books, as you can see in the illustrations, they're yeah, yeah. all inspired by the architecture. Oh. But then the war started in Syria. And this is when everything changed, even uh, my style of illustration changed, and I decided to write my book tomorrow. Okay. Now, uh, tomorrow was inspired purely by watching children around me. Uh, okay. So there is similarity with the lockdown because a lot of kids here in the UK, or all of us, a lot of us, all of us had to go through a lockdown and we couldn't see our friends anymore. We couldn't no. go out and play in the park and it was mm. uh, very difficult. And it reminded me of back home and it's very similar to the story of Yezan and tomorrow because okay. before, he can't leave the house, mm. he can't play outside, he can't meet oh. his friends. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, so I, I find it um, uh, really interesting how the world uh, came into the similar experience now to, to, to feel what it truly means to feel claustrophobic and stay at home. So let's see how, what did Yazan do to uh, make the best out of this difficult situation. Yeah, let's. <laughs> Should we start reading? Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, would you prefer? Would you? Are you starting in Arabic? Are you reading it in Arabic first? Yes. Yeah. So nice to hear. Thank you. Okay. So, marhaba I will be. I will be now turning into Arabic for all the wonderful Arabic speakers. But I will do some translation and then start with reading. So, marhaba jamian. And I hope that you will be able to read a lot of people Arabic who are listening to me now because I will be reading it in Arabic tomorrow. لم يعد يزن يذهب إلى الحديقة ولم يعد جرى حمزة ابن الشيران كل شيء يتغير حوله حتى أمه تغيرت وتوقفت عن الرسم 
كان يزن يقضي ساعات يرسم مع والدته أو يكتفي أحيانا بمراقبتها لفترات طويلة أما الآن فما أن تستيقظ في الصباح حتى تبدأ نهارها بمشاهدة الأخبار بصوت عال 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 في كل مرة يريدون الخروج من المنزل يقوم والده بعشرات الاتصالات الهاتفية وعندما يسأله عن السبب يجيبه زحمة سير نريد أن نتفاداها أصبح يزن يشعر بالضيق فعلا لا حديقة ولا جيران وحتى المدرسة يوم يذهب ويوم يعطل بدأ يشتاق إلى المدرسة في حين أنه كان يذهب إليها مجبرا اليوم يوم الجمعة ويزن ما زال في سريره بدأت الساعات تبدو له طويلة جدا في المنزل فلا شيء يقوم به نهض من سريره وحاول أن يشغل نفسه بالرسم وببناء قلعة من الوسادات في المنزل ثم قام بصنع 142 صاروخا ورقيا ولكنه ما زال يشعر بالملل ذهب إلى غرفة الجلوس وصرخ بصوت عال أريد أن أذهب إلى الحديقة الآن كان والداه يشاهدان الأخبار ولم يعيراها اهتماما كبيرا أجابته والدته ليس اليوم وتابعت مشاهدة الأخبار شعر يزن بالغضب ذهب إلى العدية وأخذ دراجته التي لم يمسها منذ شهر وقف أمام الباب وقرر الخروج إلى الحديقة وحده فكر يزن طويلا عند الباب فالقرار صعب لأن والدته ستغضب جدا إن خرج دون علمها ولكنه نظر إلى الدراجة فأغرته بالذهاب بلونها الأحمر والجرس الجديد الذي اشتراه ذو الأربع رنات فتح الباب وخرج عندما وصل إلى الشارع كان كل شيء مختلفا الطريق فارغ كليا فلم يكن هناك أبو سعيد بياع الفول ولا أصدقائه أولاد الحارة ليلعب معهم وأصوات سيارات الشرطة في كل مكان شعر يزن بالخوف الشديد فأصبح الشارع غريبا وموحشا وأصوات مخيفة تضج في كل مكان لم يعد يعرف ماذا يفعل أيكمل الطريق أم يعود إلى المنزل وعندها رأى والده كان قد خرج ليبحث عنه أمسك يده ومشيها معا إلى المنزل كان, يز... كان يزن ينتظر أن يؤنبه والده طويلا لأنه خرج دون إذن ولكن والده بقي صامتا عندما وصلا إلى المنزل كانت والدته تنتظره هي بغاية القلق ركضت إليه وعانقته طويلا ثم قالت له لا تخرج من المنزل وحدك أبدا 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 ثم نظرت إلى يزن وإلى دراجته الحمراء حملت ألوانها وريشها إلى غرفة يزن صرخ يزن لقد عادت ماما للرسم قال الأب ولكن على الحائط هذه المرة جلس يراقب والدته ترسم على حائط الغرفة فقالت له لن تتمكن من الذهاب إلى الحديقة لقد حصر شجار عنيف في الشارع والخروج من المنزل أصبح خطرا سأل يزن إلى متى؟ أجابت الأم لا أعلم إلى متى ولكن نستطيع معا أن نرسم حديقة على الحائط الحديقة التي تحلم بها قريبا ستخرج من المنزل مجددا The end Thank you so much everyone for listening Thank you, that was beautiful And now I, I can remember the story very, a little from reading it myself, but it was beautiful to hear it read in Arabic. That was 
Yeah, it was beautiful to hear the sound of a different language. So thank you so much. And you could see the pictures as you went along. So you could sort of kind of follow a good bit of the story as well without understanding exactly what was being said. But I know we're going to hear the English version yeah. now as well, aren't we? Which is great. So everybody can have a, a second listen and follow the story in a different way. Fantastic. <laughs> So if you have, if you're excited now to to know really what happens, it's time mm -hmm. to reveal the truth. Yes, <laughs> please. Um, should we share the screen again, and then I'll put the images on the screen instead of me holding the book this time? Yeah, if you'd like to do that. Yeah, um, the sc the screen is quite small when it came up last time, but we can certainly see it still. So let's give it a go. Okay. Ah, now they look larger. Let's see. Oh, yeah, that's great. We can see them there. Perfect. Okay, I'm trying to do it full screen. I always forget how to do it. Um... Okay. I think I'm just going to read it like this because I can't figure out again how to do it full screen. Okay, I can see the pictures really well. They're oh. not as large, but I can see them really clearly. So, yes. Okay. Yazan no longer went to the park and he no longer saw his friend who lived next door. Everything around him was changing. Even his mother had changed. She had stopped painting. Yazan and his mother used to spend hours painting together. Sometimes he had been happy just watching her paint. Now, the minute she woke up, she would watch the news with the volume turned up loud. So loud! Each time they wanted to leave the house, Yazan's father would make lots of phone calls. When Yezan asked why, he would say traffic. We're trying to avoid the traffic. Yezan felt really stuck. No park and no friends. One day there was school and then no school the next. He even started to miss going to school, which was a surprise. That weekend, the hours seemed so long with nothing to do. Yezan got out of bed and tried to keep himself busy. He drew a few doodles. He built a castle out of pillows. He even made 142 paper planes, but he was still bored, bored, bored. He went to the living room and screamed, I want to go to the park now. But his parents were watching the news and didn't even turn around. Not today, Yazan, said his mother. Yazan grabbed his bicycle, which he hadn't touched for over a month. He stood by the front door and wondered whether to go to the park by himself. He thought long and hard about it. He knew his mother would be angry if he left without her permission, but he looked at his bike and was tempted by his shiny red paint and his new bell that made four different sounds. Ding, ding, ding. He opened the door and walked outside. When he reached the street, it was completely empty. Everything was different. Abu Sa'id, who sold tasty beans and cumin from his trolley, was nowhere to be seen. Now they were the kids Yazan usually played with. Frightening sounds exploded all around. Yazan didn't know what to do. Should he continue to the park or go back home? Suddenly, he saw his father striding towards him. He took his hand and they walked home together. Yazan waited to be told off for leaving the house without permission, but his father didn't say a word. When they arrived home, Yazan's mother was waiting for him. She ran to him and hugged him very tightly. Don't ever go out of the house by yourself again, she said. She looked at Yazan and his little red bike. Then she grabbed her print brushes and paints and went to Yazan's room. Yay! Mama is painting again! 
Yazan cried. His father smiled, but this time she'll be painting on the wall. Yazan sat and watched his mother painting on the wall of his bedroom. I'm really sorry, she said, but you can't go to the park right now. People are fighting in the street and going out of the house is too dangerous. When will be the fighting over? Asked Yazan. I don't know, replied his mother. But let's paint a park in your bedroom. An amazing park with everything you've ever dreamed of. And soon you'll be able to go outside and play again. The end. Thank you so much for listening. So even though he couldn't physically go out to play in the park, he, they painted a lovely drawing and a lovely image of it on his wall so he could imagine he was traveling to the yeah. park and having some fun. Yeah. There. Wow, that's so lovely. I wonder whether we ought to talk about our little challenge that we're having today, um, just because it sort of links in in such a nice way with that beautiful image of the painting that was drawn, you know, on the wall. So do you want to just mention what we think the challenge might be today? And then you'll give the details. Uh, yeah, I'll give the details out, yeah. Yeah, so I think um, the challenge tied, tied, tied very well with even the current event and some kids also might go through lockdown and not go outside and play. So Yezan at the end of the story couldn't go out of his house, but he imagined an amazing park, the his dream park and painted it on the wall. So I wonder if kids can draw their dream park. What's your dream park? What's the imaginary place that you ever dreamed of? Draw it and send it to us because Jude ha has a little bit of a surprise about that, about the challenge. Yeah, absolutely. We've got a book to give away. So there'll be a book that's written and illustrated by Nadine that is the prize for sen the sending in your drawings. So it'll be a prize for the most imaginative um, park, you know, dream park. Maybe you think I really want to have a roller coaster. I'd really like an ice cream van. Whatever it might be that you want to put in your dream park. Um, it's about imagination, about just thinking about what a dream park would be like. I think the best thing is to take a photo of it, if you can, and then send it in to lal at kirklees.gov.uk. And then even though the paper copies of drawings, it's probably that they'll be so precious that you might want to put them on your wall or on your fridge anyway. So if you could, maybe a grown up could take a photo of it with their phone and then send it across to us at our email lal at kirklees.gov.uk and then we'd like to receive them before that's before the end of the 22nd of october so you've got just about a week to get drawing having fun and then send it in to us so fingers crossed we're looking forward to seeing those i know i've already started to imagine my dream park maybe i gave a clue already about the ice cream van and the roller coaster <laughs> But also, I really like the swings, especially those two swings where two meters apart, obviously, if it's a friend, you can go on some of the swings and stuff. So I'm looking forward to seeing those. Me too. I really can't wait till I see all your drawing, all the exciting drawing and be creative. Use your imagination to get you anywhere you want to be. Yeah, absolutely. And just have a go at it, a bit like the rap. Just do it. Don't worry about it. Just have fun with it. It's just about letting your imagination run free. Fantastic. Wonderful. Cool stuff. So we have got a few questions. Would you like us to go on to some of the questions now? Yeah, I my favorite part. <laughs> well, first, what we could do is just send in just bring up on the banners some words in different languages because we've got lots of things yeah. sent in, which is super exciting. So the first one I'm thinking is in German. That says Guten Morgen. Guten and I Morgen. think that must be good morning in German. We've got Ciao, <laughs> which ah. I think that probably means hello or goodbye. Hello, hello. 
and that's Italian. We've got Hola. 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 Oh, you see your bit. <laughs> Hello in Spanish. And we have got Boda. Boda. And unfortunately, Jazz hasn't written which language that is from so we have to find out that a bit later maybe he'll send it in a, a later date so and we've got another language related question and that is how many languages do you speak Nadine and any tips for learning languages and that's from one of my colleagues in Kirkley's libraries amazing amazing question because language is uh, something that i'm passionate about and i'm so happy you asked me the question well for, so um the first question how many languages do you speak i am uh fortunate enough that i get the chance to learn four languages so <laughs> so uh my arabic is my mother tongue and it's the one my main one basically the one that i'm most comfortable is um, and then French comes afterwards because I was educated in Arabic and French back home in Syria. So je parle français aussi. I speak French as well. Oh. And uh, then I learned English, as you can see, and I'm writing in English. Uh, English is my third language and I'm enjoying it so much. And it's becoming slowly the easier language to talk, to, uh, to talk with because I live in, in London. And uh, I speak, hablo español un poquito. I know one of uh, the hellos was in español because I'm just so passionate about everything Spanish, Latin American culture, wow. children's literature. I love Jorge Lohan. I love so many writers from Latin America and from yeah, Spain. Yeah. I learn Spanish. Oh, fantastic. So you're inspired to learn another language because of the authors and the writing that you're reading, that it gives you inspiration to have a go at learning something more about the culture that those books and things have come exactly. from, like the it's language. A, it's, a it's a window to another culture. It's not only a tool to make you understand others, but I find it a window to another world and it's so beautiful. Oh. Now, for learning language, languages i think my main tip i give syrians here in the uk is yeah, yeah. um preserve your mother tongue if you speak yes. your mother tongue well your brain will be developed to be multilingual and your it will be easier for you to speak other languages and i find it every day and i'm struggling now with my toddler to keep him speaking in arabic because <laughs> it's everywhere so it is an effort yeah, and I yeah. find that, and all research proves that children who speak their mother tongue well and then they immigrate somewhere else, they are better bilingual children, they speak better English, better French, or better second and third ah, language. Ah, that's good. Yeah. Oh, so that's inspiring. That's inspiring to, to know that, isn't it? Yeah, I'm trying to learn German because my friend lives in Germany and is German. Um, and so the more I get to speak it, the more I get used to speaking it. And you learn all how to listen to it and everything, don't you? So, But it's amazing that you speak four different languages. So I think we have Hannah, who I'm going to bring onto the screen um, because Hannah's got a question she'd love to be able to ask as well. Hi, uh, Hannah. Hi. I, do. I have a question for you here. Um, where did you learn to draw? Okay, so I did my first book at the age of eight, so I didn't learn it. It came naturally. <laughs> I didn't stop really drawing since I was young, but I uh, studied fine arts in Damascus, in the um, fine arts faculty of Damascus, and then I did my master's here in illustration and communication design so it's always been my focus to continue on this path of uh illustrating and writing children's books oh, okay um what do you use to create your illustrations do you use pencils crayons i am a watercolor addict <laughs> <laughs> I tried to use any other mediums. I tried so hard to change. It's just I couldn't. So watercolor, I use a little bit in the pencils of colored pencils. I don't know if you can see in tomorrow here. So there is watercolor and then there is pencils of the hair. So I enhance it with pencils at the end and color pencil, but watercolor is my base and um, yeah. I'm just addicted yeah. to watercolor. I love it. They're really nice designs. 
we have another question about the drawings as well. So, where do you practice your drawings? And how many times do you draw before you're happy with your pictures? They are beautiful. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> I agree, they are beautiful. Well, um, so there is the right way to answer and the reality. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have the reality and the right way <laughs> separately. <Yeah. laughs> So the right way to answer is that artists should always have a sketchbook in their hand and they're always sketching. So where do you practice? Whether you're in the tube, in the bus, in the park, always keep sketching. The more you practice, the more you get at it. And many people come and ask me, am I talented? And I say, I do believe in talent, but it's 80% practice, really. It's like learning a language and it's like playing a music. Talent is important, but practice is important. Doing it, now, if, do I do this? <laughs> I know that my drawings would be much better if I have a sketchbook every day, but I have a toddler who doesn't make me hands free all the time. So, <laughs> so I try I try in the evening and I think my brain is more clear in the morning. So first thing in the morning when my little one is in the nursery, I just do my, my best drawings. Oh wow. That's lovely to know. And um yeah, so do you find that you do have to keep drawing, drawing before you're happy with the drawing? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, uh, so it's really funny and strange because some, sometimes I do it quickly and I love it and it's ready. I was like, wow, from one go and it's ready. And yeah, sometimes yeah. it takes me one to two weeks to finish one spread. And I don't understand why it's not happening. <laughs> but this is creativity. I mean, it's just... It's, it's strange in that way. You don't know why sometimes you can finish it and love it from the first go and sometimes it takes 100 tries. So It can no be unpredictable, can't it? Definitely, no. definitely. And and I, I think it's such a lovely um, thought of you starting to draw when you're eight and there'll be lots of children who are probably watching this either now live or watching it again, you know, the, the recorded version. And, and one of the things is just keep doing it, isn't it? Keep drawing, find your style, have fun with it. And yeah, carry a bit of a sketchbook with you. Maybe you see something that you want to do a quick drawing of. It doesn't have to be a, a massive finished painting, does it? Or drawing. It can just be a little idea that you draw and just keep practicing, practicing and having fun, which I think is I find exactly that, yeah, what you said. This is an amazing tip, Jude, because I find a lot of people and a lot of children are holding themselves back because they're worried about the results. And I say the mm. worst drawing mm. you do is the empty page. The worst yeah. book you write is the empty page. So as long as you're doing it, it's good. Just keep doing it. Yeah, and you'll just keep it. doing it. Yeah, absolutely. That's wonderful advice. So we've had one of the questions, which do you do, use paints or crayons? And it's watercolors that you use. We've got a comment about jazz Jasmine Sneeze, which is from Amanda, and she says, I love the colors on the cover of the Jasmine Sneeze. <laughs> is and that is also the tiles that are similar colors. These are inspired wow. from Damascus tiles, as you can see. That's this the really lovely colors, and the pink in there as well, which is gorgeous. So, again, I guess it's just experimenting with things, colors that are around you, trying out different colors and things like that, isn't it? See what you like and what works. And that's another beautiful book. So I think we might have to move away. We've got lots and lots of really positive comments, which I'm going to send them all to you. Um, you. Yeah. There is just one question which is pertinent to libraries, and that's about what do you like to read? And yeah, what, what do you like to read when you're not writing your own storybooks? What do you like to read? Ah, oh, beautiful. I mean, it's so funny because I read lots of picture books. And, <laughs> and I, uh, it's, it's, I found it a little bit sad that children at some age say, and all picture books are for younger kids, and I will go for chapter books. One shouldn't replace the other, I find. And oh, for me, yeah. I am so inspired by children's books, uh, by picture books, because they're so stimulating and uh, they can tell, the illustration can tell different stories from the words. So I read a lot of, like I mentioned, I'm obsessed with Latin American children's books so yeah, i love yeah. Khan and i love a lot of spanish writers um 
but I also love some French writers as well. Uh, in literature, I love Turkish uh, Turkish writers. Turkish oh, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I love Orhan Pamuk. At, he's, he's a wonderful writer. So it's also maybe a little tip that to read your word is good also to read translated literature. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So maybe we can get a few of those names down and we can pop them on our website. And then when people want to find out about it, they can have a look at our website and, and find some of the books that you might be reading, especially the picture books and things like that. And I'll just pop this up, which is about our, our Overdrive page, just so people you know we have picture books electronic picture books as well so you can download the ebooks from overdrive.com the kirkley's overdrive.com and you can get some picture books from there as well that you'll be able to look at on your screen on your laptop or your phone or your kindle so there's lots of those available to borrow so i'm just conscious of the time and we've got to tend to now a <laughs> super fast time and i know that you've got another treat for us and i just need a tissue because for some reason my nose is starting to run and i think you were going to show us a tiny bit of drawing i know we haven't got lots of time but i really don't want to miss this so okay. it'll be super good if you don't mind doing that i think we have time for one drawing only although i prepared for more drawings well, but i i'm happy to two. But more? let's see how we go we'll go with one and then maybe have two fingers okay. crossed i find <laughs> I don't rush it. okay i won't but i find that i'm gonna show you how i draw Harun from the Jasmine Sneeze oh, because I want to show you that although for some children this might look complicated mm. the lines are so simple so I'm going to show you how I draw Harun which I found it very very simple so that's Harun my character from the Jasmine Sneeze. So the lines are so simple. Wow. It shows everyone that we shouldn't worry about doing something because no. it might look a bit more complicated. Now, quick tip, since I have a little bit more time. Yeah, yeah. By changing the eyes, I change the entire expression. So I don't need to change anything. Oh, yeah. Just through the eyes, you can show a completely different emotion. So I'm gonna show you Harun angry and kids really love the angry. One, they always say, draw him angry, draw him angry, because he looks funny. <laughs> to see the difference, just by changing the eyes, I didn't change anything. And he looks angry here. Oh, so the shape is the same, but the eyes are the bit that's changed. I mean, it's so funny how the eyes can shade the entire mood of the illustration. You see the difference? Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. amazing. And if I want to exaggerate and make him really really angry mm -hmm. i'll just exaggerate the eyes a little bit more and then maybe add oh. some lines to show a little bit of more anger wow and that's harun is very very angry sometimes i add lines to show to focus on the eyes because yes oh fantastic Gosh. so it's, it's really the same isn't it but you can see the difference between yeah, the yeah. that's amazing so just it's really clever one. And I don't have a mouse, so I don't need to draw a happy or sad mouse. Just the eyes for me is enough. Yeah. Oh, that's because I didn't notice that there wasn't a mouth. Yeah. Ah, now you are, yeah. So you yeah. obviously there's enough in there to show us what Harun's like. I'll show you one image of, of, of the book. For example, here's Harun sad. And again, there is no mouse, right? No. Just the eyes. And also sometimes just the colors. If you can see here, the colors are gloomy because here's in the part of the book where it's really sad. So everything was blue and, and gloomy. Oh. The colors can help with the mood as well. Yeah, yeah. So all those colors too. My goodness. So if somebody was wanting to have a go at drawing something, have you got just one tip for that? that would it be maybe the eyes or the shape or? Um, the eyes are really important. Uh, I find them, they're just like the most expressive thing in the drawings. But another tip is you might want to start with pencil, with light lines, and then at the end, add the marker. I started immediately in the marker because I've done this so many times. But when I need to practice, I don't practice in the marker. So pencil is very good to sketch. Okay, and then you can rub bits out, can't you? Redo them, and oh, yeah. that sounds wonderful. And then Thank on the top you. of the pencil, you can add the marker. 
yeah and add some colors and try out some crayons and try out different medium i guess to just see what happens Wow, that's fantastic. So again, we can put the tips on our website so that if people want to go to that, I'll just bring it up very briefly again. So that's our website, www.kirklees.gov. Sorry, kirklees.co.uk. Wonderful. So I think we're almost out of time. Um, let's just double check. So we have got a comment from Amanda that she said, love it. Nadine makes drawing look so easy. Changing the eyes makes so much of a difference. Angry cat. <laughs> Thank you, Amanda. And then an another comments come through from Facebook. What a beautiful, inspiring and engaging author. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, wonderful. Yes. Now, I think we probably could just maybe finish on that amazing comment and just say, Nadine, we'll just quickly reiterate about the challenge that we set, which is like, um, just draw your dream park, take a photo, send it in to us at Lao. And there's a prize to give away, which is one of Nadine's amazing books. Let me just get that banner up. Um, Lal at kirklings.gov.uk. I know it's all back to front. I have to kind of do both of them yeah, to make sure I get the right bit. <laughs> um, yeah, that's great. And Hannah, who is one of our apprentices, has joined us with the questions yep. today. I'll just double check that there's nothing else from Hannah today. Anything from you, Hannah? No, it's just been a brilliant session. I've really oh, enjoyed it. Thanks wonderful. for joining us, Nadine. That's Thank you. Thank you. I know. It's been absolutely wonderful. Now, Nadine, if you don't mind just staying where you are, I'm just going to give a little bit of information about next week and then we'll come to the end of that. So remember, 22nd of October is the deadline for the challenge, your dream park. Send it in to lal at co3.co.uk. And I'll just get Nadine's Instagram up again. So if you do want to see Nadine and where she is, what she's doing, yeah, we'll be doing a lot of weird dancing, won't we? Then it's at Nadine underscore Kadan, as you can see there. And I'm sure she'd be super pleased to hear from you as well. So I'm just going to change the screen a tiny bit and get us all in there. So I'm just going to say what a fun and fantastic event that was. It's been absolutely brilliant today. And I've learned loads, which is always good. It's always good to learn different things about drawing, about languages, about books and about writing books and things. What a great challenge we've got as well, because I'm sure there's loads of people with imagination about a dream park. I'm sure it'd be fantastic and we'll look forward to hearing about that. So please get your answers to us by the 22nd of October. And thank you everyone for sending your questions and comments in to us. It's been wonderful. It always makes it even better when we have some extra questions that we can talk about and answer. And next week, we've got another award winning author. And he is called Ross McKenzie. Ross is a Blue Peter award winning author, and he's a master weaver of enticing and beguiling, I got such a big word, I'm finding it hard to say, enticing and beguiling tales. We are going to hear him read from his latest book, Evernight. Sorry, I'm having a tiny bit of problem with the sound. We're going to hear him reading from his latest book, Evernight, which is an engrossing tale of magic, slums, sewers, rats, old hags, and witches, both ancient and new, young. Now that sounds really, 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 really interesting and really, really adventurous. I'm not quite sure where all those come into the story, but we'll soon be finding out. And Ross will be discussing with us the power of stories and imagination and answering questions and setting another exciting creative challenge. We do like to keep you adventuring at Kirklees Libraries and we do like to keep you entertained at Kirklees Libraries. So I just want to give an enormous round of applause to Nadine again yeah, for doing such a fabulous job for Library Adventures Live. It's been an absolute joy to have you here Nadine and your picture books are so engaging and to hear it in Arabic as well was just 
perfect. It was a real treat to hear a different language. So thank you again. We are finishing a tiny bit early. So I'm not putting you on the spot, but if you've got anything else that you want to say, please do. We've got a couple of minutes or we can just end as we are on a really high note. It's up to you. Oh, I just want to say thank you so much for inviting me to this anything, amazing anything. adventure. Since I moved to the UK, I've been a big fan of libraries. Oh. So they are, you are doing amazing, amazing things. It's, it's an amazing institute. And I'm so happy that now you move things online. So uh, if, if you live anywhere, go to your local library. Yeah, You'll be missing a lot if you don't know where your local library is and you don't get involved in their events. I, I live in West London and I love our local library as well. So thank you so much. Thank you for Aww. inviting me. It was a pleasure. That is, yeah, absolute pleasure. And what a fantastic point to end on. Such a wonderful author and illustrator that's joined us today. Um, we've got another author next week, Ross McKenzie. And it's just been brilliant. Thank you so much, Nadine. Thank and you. I think we just say bye to everybody else. Bye, everybody. Bye.